you doing today? We are here back again with a different video. In this video, I have an Acer laptop in front of me, and this one is an Acer Aspire E15 500 series. So, pretty much what I'm going to show you guys <coughs> how to take it apart and how to, <coughs> sorry guys, <coughs> how to repaste. And I'm going to show you some defect uh, regarding these laptops that they have. First thing first, you want to flip it over. And the battery for this one is non removable from outside. You have to open it inside. It's right over here. So, what we're going to do pretty much, we're going to remove all the screws that is on the bottom cover. So, let's go ahead and remove all the screws. All right, all the screws are the same size height, so you don't have to worry about mismatching them. So put all the screws to one side. Once you remove all the screws on the top, you want to remove the caddy for the DVD ROM, or you might have a DVD ROM. In this case, it's just a regular caddy. And this is what I like about this caddy. This is what I was talking in my other videos. Normally, they just give you the whole thing is one piece. They don't give you the cover for it. In this case, in this one, you can actually remove the cover, top cover, the face plate. This one is right here. There's some clips. You can just remove the, this one and just buy yourself a DVD ROM and snap the top cover. So you will get the, the finished end of the laptop. And you can actually remove the lock from here and place it on your DVD ROM. So this is actually one good feature that they actually did. That's one positive thing that they have done. And also you want to remove the three screws right on the DVD ROM cover. And these are the same type. All right, next you want to grab yourself a guitar pick or any opening tool. I like guitar pick because it just fits nice and snugly inside my hand so I don't have to actually hold anything larger. Uh, what you want to do, you want to grab it from the corner where the black and the top and bottom cover is and you want to stick it right there. I just want to just Twist it right in there and keep it open with your fingers. And while you're keeping it up, so don't let it go down. And just do the same thing on the bottom, so on the side. I always start from the CD ROM side and then work yourself through right to the front end. Once you go halfway through the front, you leave it there and you go in the back side, do the same thing by the battery. You don't have to wiggle it around, so you want to hear those click sounds. Oh, I forgot a screw right there. So make sure you always remove all the screws. Alright, once you remove everything, the reason that I always open it up from the this side, so there's no I.O., there's only one USB. And there's enough clearance for this USB jack to uh, let it go. And the, on this side, we got the VGA and all the other ports here. So it's harder to lift up from this side. So I always lift up from the DVD right. And then I'll just push the cover towards this end. And don't push too hard. Because at the bottom, you're going to see a cable right here. This is the audio cable for the speakers. You're just going to... Let's connect this one and this is the bottom cover and there's uh, two speakers and one cable that connects it. So I'll put this one to a side. Now down here you got the hard drive, the RAM and there's one more extra RAM and the battery is right here. The battery is just loose here. They don't put any screw or anything like that. You can just unhook it just by removing the jack just like that. Uh, you can change your battery this way. All right, we're gonna leave that one inside. So this is my biggest issue. First thing, first thing I'm gonna disconnect the fan for the heat sink. Actually, you don't need to. Just let's put it back in. All right. I see you. I don't know if you guys can see this or not. My issue here is the heat sink right here. The heat sink. And I am guessing they designed the heatsink thinking that the CPU will be flipped over on this side so that this die, which is the APU or whatever they, it does, 
it should have been on this end of the heat sink so this plate right here it should cover and uh, this die over here but somewhere in the manufacturing they decided to flip over the cpu and they so this die instead of ending up on this end ended up on this side and it's not touching the heat sink nor is touching the pipe so pretty much it's just laying right there there's enough space to shove my screw right there so there's a big gap right there so if you want to do anything graphical or anything like that it's just going to overheat and it's just going to over throttle so there's not much uh, fix for this one unless you put a thermal pad here and the thermal pad is not a solution it, this is just a defect so we're gonna remove the heat sink and see how it, what's going on under the so remove the three screws and these X clamps are really garbage so they don't have any tension or anything like that so I just slip them off a little bit edge so it, it gives you more pressure towards the heat sink so remember this one was right there right okay so I'm gonna flip it over this side so you guys can see actually they put enough thermal paste here so if I divide this one right here, this one, it should be covering this one right here. Just because the CPU was flipped over 180 degree on the other side, this die, instead of being on this end, touching this thermal pad right here, thermal paste, which is touching nothing right now, it ended up right there. So this is just a defect. And I don't know why they cut this plate. They, should, they could have just left this end. I'm just guessing to save metal material or whatever if they would have left this side intact um, but then they should have actually repasted the whole thing so this is it looks like a defect because the thermal paste is being applied on up to here thinking that the die would have been here but the die is right over on the other side because the cpu is actually rotated 180 degrees so if you can see this one should have been here if you flip this one over here so yeah so there's not much you can do here just put a regular thermal pad here about three to four centimeters thermal pad that's the only thing you can do just like that and just put a new clean the thermal paste All right, now we can grab the thermal paste and just put a little bit there. Now we want to actually apply the same thing, but this time hopefully get a little bit of, and always clean up your heat sink if you want to. Put it down and put these screws for it. Alright, so he's, he's not even be able to touch the whole thing because the heat sink is the pipe is going that way, it's not going straight over. So it's not helping that much, but it's better than nothing. So you could have actually go with a copper shim and put a copper shim right over both of the dies, but you need a bigger copper shim, so and they put this one under the heat sink. Uh, so pretty much you want to do a sandwich of the copper shrimp that's an ideal thing to do depends but in this one I'm just showing you guys how to do it next you want to connect the battery back in snuggle the cables right in there and the last thing is grab the top cover and if I show you guys the battery the battery you plug the battery back in make sure the cables goes right in between the battery and the motherboard grab the bottom cover first put this side down just show it in so make sure the audio jack goes in first always focus on the audio jack the audio jack is right in the corner make sure that one in the corner goes down and the rest should just fit in and then go push down the corner the side the front you want to hear those click sounds 
Oh, by the way, I forgot to... Before you do any of those... Plug in the audio cable, which is right over here. So grab this jack, put in offset. Plug in the jack. Now put the audio side down. That's kind of... Now what you want to do, you want to put the three flat screws right under the CD-ROM. Put the cover or the caddy and put the rest of the screws back on the bottom plate. And that's how you repaste and try to fix the defect that they have on these models. And they haven't done any recalling or anything on these specific models. So yeah, thanks for watching guys. And uh, I hope you liked this video. If you liked it, click that thumbs up button. It really helps out. And if you have any comments or questions, leave them in the comment area and I will try to answer them as soon as I can. Thanks for watching guys.